Hey guys, how are we doing? So, some of you may notice right off the bat that uh, my camera angle is slightly different from the rest of my other videos. I figured I'd just mix things up a bit because everything else I've ever done has been straightforward on my main monitor. And I figured, hey, why, why not mix it up a bit? It's 2017, perfect opportunity to just change. If you guys hate it that much, I'll change it back, but I, I figured I'd give it a try and see how it is. It just gives a different kind of atmosphere to the video. And some of you may also notice that I now have lighting kind of as well, um, so that's cool. But anyway, what we're doing today is actually bashing on some anarcho-capitalists even more. I know I just made a video on them, but literally the day after, or maybe even the same day, I can't remember, that guy T uploaded a video kind of going on the same topic, but not really at all. But I think if we would just kind of watch for it together, pick apart the many, many, many inaccuracies, and just have some fun. Now the title of the video is actually beautiful and plays perfectly into the video that I made, uh, the, the last video I made before this. I'll leave a description somewhere on the screen now. I highly recommend you watch it because uh, it, it's just it's just worth watching before going into the video that that guy T has made. So give that a watch. Um, but, but the title of this video alone plays in perfectly to the points I was actually making in that video and that title is The Necessary Oppression of Leftists. Um, and it's just, what more needs to be said, really? <laughs> let's, let, let, let's just get into it. Hey, dude, what's going on? Hope y'all had a good Christmas. Sorry for the content intermission. I had to purchase a new computer and pay for some car repairs. Okay, now who's willing to bet that his computer and car broke because of planned obsolescence in the market? Not gonna spend too much time whining about being poor. Let's just move on with the video. Tell me, how often do you hear the complaint of oppression from the left? It's pretty common, particularly among the newly introduced social justice brand of leftism. I could, I could bring up every time he says that social justice warriors and liberals are leftists. Or I could just get it out of the way now. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna do that now, and then I'm, I don't have to bring it up again, and we're good. Because obviously, for anyone who doesn't know, leftism is about a radically different uh, reconstructing of society, while liberalism is Let's keep what we got going now, but some maybe some minor changes, but overall not actually really affecting anything at all, just kind of making you feel slightly better about your immediate surroundings. But anyway. Aside from usually being a petty self-serving cry for attention, it also serves as the foundation on which many of these ideological sects draw legitimacy advocating for the rights of oppressed groups. And for the longest, I've dismissed these cries of persecution on the grounds of irrational, assumptive conclusions, typically concluding their oppression is a result of capitalist exploitation, sexism, racism, or any other isms in the book. So maybe he's done this in past videos, but he said that the, these claims of oppression are wrong, for instance, capitalist exploitation, um, but he hasn't actually explained why they're wrong. But again, maybe he's done that before. I'd like to see him try and uh, talk about why wage slavery is wrong, but then again, he probably hasn't. He probably doesn't know about it, or, or he probably just thinks it's vol voluntary. But anyway, many people hear this and react with confusion because while they too are against racism, sexism, exploitation, and many of the other things the left blames on his suffering, they can't properly rationalize or sympathize because leftists operate on a basis of different definitions than you or I would normally use. I'm starting to realize that this redefining of concepts and principles not only skews their conclusions toward irrationality, but it influences their entire ideological premise. Meaning, not only do their conclusions make no fucking sense, but even their aforementioned grievances are corrupted and unreasonable. And this is due much in part to the left's interpretation of oppression. So first, let's define oppression. Oppression, the unjust or cruel exercise of authority or power. I think that's a pretty suffice definition. Most people would interpret unjust or cruel exercise to mean levying force, action, intimidation, aggression, or the threat thereof against someone. This interpretation corresponds with that of many political philosophies such as libertarianism's not aggression principle, which states that aggression, defined as initiating or threatening the use of any and all forcible interference with an individual or individual's property, excluding self-defense, is illegitimate. 
Also with liberalism, in the classical sense of course, not to be confused with progressive leftism. As Randy E. Barnett, author of classical liberal publication The Structure of Liberty, Justice and the Rule of Law explains, quote, the liberal conception of justice specifies a right of a person to acquire, possess, use, and dispose of scarce physical resources including their own bodies, as well as freedom from and freedom to contract associations of themselves or their resources. The left doesn't operate in accordance with this. They see oppression as something that can be levied without action, without intent. Okay, I agree with that definition, but my problem here is that you've then interpreted one of those words and built an entire argument off of it. So basically your entire argument falls apart when someone interprets that word differently. By no means does exercise need to be physical force, and I can explain this quite well with wage slavery. When a worker who has no choice but to get a job, because if he doesn't get a job he starves to death, because it's like, if I put a gun to your head and ask for your money, oh well you, you have the choice to get shot, no we're not doing that. Um, so a worker who has no choice to get a job, and in this job his labour is systematically and inherently stolen from because the, um, he puts in labor into a commodity, the commodity is then sold off for a higher price than the wage that the worker is given, yet the worker did all the work. And yes, we can go into, oh, but the capitalist owned the property and he worked up for that. I've gone off into every avenue where we can think of where the capitalists might be justified to do this in previous videos. I don't want to do it again here because it takes up too much time, but I will link a video where I go through that on the screen now if you are curious. Um, but anyway, that would be oppression because it is the unjust exercise of authority, the authority of owning the means of production, owning the only source of money and therefore the only source from which the worker can receive subsistence and then stealing wage from that worker that you have not contributed to. I would call that unjust. I would also call that exercise. Yet no physical force has happened anywhere in here, yet it is still oppression. I'm going by the exact same definition you are, so don't say I'm just making up different definitions. I'm just interpreting one word differently, which is perfectly valid because, again, you chose to interpret one word in a certain way and build off of that. So, yeah. And we can still apply this uh, definition of justice to whether or not it's just that the worker has his labour stolen from him by the capitalist. So again, we can work with the exact same definitions you're working with and still come out with the same conclusions. Common examples of this can be seen throughout modern social justice. Feminists complaining that they're oppressed by gender imbalances in STEM fields or positions of power, unfair distribution of wealth via the wage gap, manspreading. In their eyes, this is due to a patriarchal system of systemic sexism and misogyny. When in reality, gender imbalances in STEM, politics, and business is simply the end result of free association. Women choosing not to pursue those careers and men opting to. Now this again is a more identity politics argument but I do want to just throw something in there. What really annoys me about um, reactionaries is that they, they, they are right in that there isn't an explicit wage gap. Um, but it's like they, they, just, they just give up almost with the problem. They, they take it at, oh well women on average tend to do this and men on average tend to do this and these are just the choices they make. But they don't actually look into why they're making those choices. There have to be reasons that on average half of the population is doing one thing and the other half is, do is doing another. And it's not because of inherent differences in biology because actually male and female brains when it comes to cognitive things are very similar at birth at least. It's only when they've actually grown up and been subject to social conditioning that they tend to specialize in different things. But again, reactionaries just seem to leave it at, uh, oh, well, people just do this and that's that, and we'll just leave it at that. And even though for some reason women just aren't getting into STEM as much, so therefore we're missing out on about 50% of the population going into science and then furthering scientific progress, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. That's just how the world is. Guess, it, guess nothing can be done. Well, actually, things can be done, and that's what the real left are trying to do. The liberal left, left, are trying to say, oh, well, if we just implement diversity quotas and kind of just, you know, uh, force everything 
to, to make it look like it's equal, it will actually be equal when in actuality you're not cause you're not actually dealing with the root problem, so you're not really changing anything. And I know what some of you are thinking, well T, that's just the regressives, man. That's just them SJWs. That's not the same as leftism. Wrong. This phenomena stems from Marx's critical theory, which more or less is the foundational reference for all modern leftist ideologies. Well, that is actually a really interesting point. I've never heard that before. Do you think you can kind of elaborate on this and uh, show me the deep uh, perception uh, into the Marxist theory that you have to act as the base is literally all leftism. I'd, I'd love to hear that. I discovered a YouTube channel. Oh no, no, okay. Okay, so you're just going on to something different and you're not actually backing up that point at all. So you're just saying things and not giving any reasoning for it. Okay, so you're saying that anarchism, mutualism, progressivism, social democracy, democratic socialism, syndicalism, market socialism, they all stem from Marxism. They also, all these different ideologies which actually most of the time hate each other, are actually just the same ideology. Okay, that's... <sighs> that is uh, reductionism on a new level. I discovered a YouTube channel called True Deal Time a few days ago. In one of his videos, he made a brilliant point in response to a comment made by my buddy Sargon of Akkad. Libertarians seem to define freedom as just freedom from government interference. And so this is what I think libertarians need to understand. Like, for example, poverty is a man who has no house, who has no food, who has no has water, he can't shower, he can't wash, he can't, he can't dress himself properly. That's not a free man, even though the government isn't going to be keeping him, you know, with their thumb on his... He's not paying any tax, but he's not a free man. Th this is not freedom. This is just slavery to poverty. Ah, uh, yes. Now, this is probably one of the most significant differences between the left and the right in political philosophy. The conception of freedom. And in my opinion, the left-wing definition of freedom, the one that Sargon is inciting, in that one can not only be free from coercive infringements but made by others, but they must also have the ability to actualize their desires, is equivocating freedom with power. The way the poor man isn't free because they can't offer anybody else value in exchange for goods, which is what it really means to be poor, whether it be due to circumstance or ability, is the same way I am not free because I can't fly or have x-ray vision, because in both circumstances, our struggle is merely not being able to make our interests a reality. Okay, you know what, just to not kind of get uh, messy with loads of different definitions here, I'm actually going to say the right wing definition of freedom that he's giving here is perfectly valid. That's fine. So I'm just going to say, I don't think it's enough to have freedom. I want people to have freedom and power because you know what? A society where both freedom and power for everyone is very much attainable. So there's no reason not to have it. Like, maybe the liberals and maybe the reactionaries, they want to argue that everyone just wants freedom and that's it and that's enough. The freedom to be poor, the freedom to not be able to have any power. That's fine. If that's what they want, that's okay. I'm saying that's not enough. That's by far not enough. <laughs> I'm saying we need both freedom and power because there's no reason not to. Because again, we have enough food to feed everybody. We have enough houses to house everybody. We have the, the means to give everybody the bare minimum of what they need today, right now. Furthermore, we have the means for a very large amount of the population to just not work at all. And we have the means for an even bigger part of the population to work significantly less than they are right now. But we don't do it because they have the freedom to work. Well, that's great, but I don't give a fuck about just having a freedom. I want people to have the power to actually enjoy their lives and pursue what they want to pursue. And in regards to the comment of being slave to poverty, I get Sargon would probably understand this as a metaphor, but for some people watching, poverty isn't a person. It it's, isn't something somebody does to you either. It is the natural state of affairs until actions are taken to create wealth. Being slave to poverty is similar to how I'm slave to nature because I'm going to die someday. Furthermore, this whole slave to poverty thing, well, it's the whole idea that because you are in poverty, you are restricted to do what you want to do, and therefore it takes away your power. And you say you're a slave to nature because you're going to die one day, and that somehow invalidates the idea of slavery to poverty. And, well, no, it doesn't. You are a slave to nature because you're going to die one day, which is why transhumanism can help with that. Um, where we can emancipate ourselves from death. 
But until then, we, we can't do anything about it, so we do have to just kind of accept it. But the thing is, we can do something about being a slave to poverty, so... So, the question becomes, can leftists ever be allowed to achieve freedom from oppression? The answer, as I see it currently, is no. The oppression of leftists is necessary to the preservation of Western civilization, not via our definition, but via theirs. Liberalism, individualism, capitalism, property rights, these concepts inherently equate to oppression according to leftist doctrine, which is why they seek to regulate, limit, and redistribute these things as much as possible. Okay, now he actually makes an interesting point here. He's saying that leftists can't be oppressed based on their own definition of oppression. He's saying that people only need to be free and that's it, while leftists are saying people need to be free and have power, I guess. I think that's what I'm kind of getting here. So therefore, leftists are oppressed in their own sense. Okay. Now, on its own, this doesn't seem like that uh, fascistic, as I've been claiming in my other video. I don't know if that's a word, but anyway, it doesn't seem that bad. Um, but here's the thing, I still, I just kind of want to highlight here quickly that he still does very much uh, advocate for the oppression of leftists based on them being left-wing and based and just basically saying that being a left-winger is a criminal act and therefore that's why it's okay to use force against them and that's why it's not violate, violating the nap. Um, which is mainly what I was talking about in my video yesterday, he's kind of talking about a different topic here. But I did just, I did just want to highlight that this isn't as far as it goes. Like in this video in particular, that title is more clickbaity. Um, while his actual point he's making is a lot less radical, but he still does hold that initial view that everyone assumed he did when they first read that title. Just wanted to get that out there. If you're oppressed by someone becoming more financially successful than you through capitalist means, then the only way to fight that is to compensate and redistribute wealth. I want to clarify on this, it's not simply people being richer is the oppression, that's not what it is. The oppression comes from both the stealing of wealth from those who create it, so therefore it's actually just kind of stealing back your own wealth for the working class, but anyway. And secondly, the use of state apparatus in order to keep those people rich. Like the fact that the police, okay, I'm sure we both agree that the police are shitty, well that's because the police are used by the ruling class to keep themselves in power. The police oppress the working class to keep, to keep the ruling class rich. So therefore, when you confiscate wealth, you're not just trying to, you're not just doing that just because they're rich. You're doing that because the fact that they're rich, the only reason they could get rich in the first place is through stealing from other people's labor, and the fact that they're rich causes things like the oppression from police force and countless other things that we won't get into here. But if we were to be intellectually honest and apply this same logic consistently to say organ transplants, then the argument would go as, someone not giving one of their two working kidneys to someone suffering from kidney failure is the same as killing them, and therefore is morally justifiable to prevent this by forcefully confiscating and redistributing kidneys. Yet, for some reason, we don't do this. Fucking organ transplant argument. Okay, so Marxists advocate for the seizing of the means of production, the seizing of property and capital, and the redistribution of wealth because it's economics and it's capital which drives society, which shapes society. If you go around and you redistribute organs, okay, you don't actually change the fundamental uh, shape of society. You don't change politics, you don't change culture, you don't change economics. You make some people's lives better, but ultimately you don't change society. That's why we advocate for only the redistribution of wealth and the seizing of private property, because that is what drives society. And that's, that's it. <laughs> that's why we don't, that's why there's never been a communist revolution where your toothbrush was stolen, because your toothbrush doesn't shape culture. So screw it. Until leftists abandon Marxist, socialist, and authoritarian principles, then their oppression is not only the moral thing to advocate for, it's the responsible thing as well. I guess I'm just a racist, sexist, transphobe, Islamophobe, and now fascist. And that's okay. Fuck you, Antifa. You don't get to have rights anymore. Let's give them a helicopter ride, okay? Right? Good.
Oh, oh, hey, uh, can, can I join in the autism too? I think I have some clips I can throw in. Любовь суровая, но нервная, готовый 